October 13th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Jeremiah chapters 40 and 41 from the Old Testament The Lord spoke to Jeremiah after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, had set him free at Ramah. He had taken him there in chains along with all the people from Jerusalem and Judah who were being carried off to exile to Babylon. The captain of the royal guard took Jeremiah aside and said to him, The Lord your God threatened this place with this disaster. Now he has brought it about. The Lord has done just as he threatened to do. This disaster has happened because you people sinned against the Lord and did not obey him. But now, Jeremiah, today I will set you free from the chains on your wrist. If you would like to come to Babylon with me, Come along, and I will take care of you. But if you prefer not to come to Babylon with me, you are not required to do so. You are free to go anywhere in the land you want to go. Go wherever you choose. Before Jeremiah could turn to leave, the captain of the guard added, Go back to Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, the grandson of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon appointed to govern the towns of Judah. Go back and live with him among the people, or go wherever else you choose. Then the captain of the guard gave Jeremiah some food and a present and let him go. So Jeremiah went to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, at Mizpah, and lived there with him. He stayed there to live among the people who had been left in the land of Judah. Now some of the officers of the Judean army and their troops had been hiding in the countryside. They heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, to govern the country. They also heard that he had been put in charge over the men, women, and children from the poorer classes of the land who had not been carried off into exile in Babylon. So all these officers and their troops came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. The officers who came were Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, Johanan and Jonathan, the sons of Korea, Sareah, son of Tanhumeth, the sons of Ephi, the Nedophathite, and Jezaniah, son of the Maacathite. Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam and grandson of Shaphan, took an oath as to give to them and their troops some assurance of safety. Do not be afraid to submit to the Babylonians. Settle down in the land and submit to the king of Babylon. Then things will go well for you. I, for my part, will stay at Mizpah to represent you before the Babylonians whenever they come to us. You, for your part, go ahead and harvest the wine, the dates, the figs, and the olive oil and store them in jars. Go ahead and settle down in the towns that you have taken over. Moreover, all the Judeans who were in Moab, Ammon, Edom, and all the other countries heard what had happened. They heard that the king of Babylon had allowed some people to stay in Judah, and that he had appointed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, and the grandson of Shaphan, to govern them. So all these Judeans returned to the land of Judah from the places where they had been scattered. They came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. Thus they harvested a large amount of wine and dates and figs. Johanan and all the officers of the troops that had been hiding in the open country came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. They said to him, Are you at all aware that King Balas of Ammon had sent Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, to kill you? But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, would not believe them. Then Johanan, son of Korea, spoke privately to Gedaliah there at Mizpah. Let me go and kill Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, before anyone knows about it. Otherwise he will kill you and all the Judeans who have rallied around you will be scattered. Then what remains of Judah will disappear. But Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, said to Johanan, son of Korea, Do not do that because what you are saying about Ishmael is not true. But in the seventh month, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and grandson of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family and had been one of Zedekiah's chief officers, came with ten of his men to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam at Mizpah. While they were eating a meal together with him there at Mizpah, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and the ten men who were with him stood up. 
pulled out their swords and killed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam and grandson of Shaphan. Thus Ishmael killed the man that the king of Babylon had appointed to govern the country. Ishmael also killed all the Judeans who were with Gedaliah at Mizpah and the Babylonian soldiers who happened to be there. On the day after Gedaliah had been murdered, before anyone knew about it, eighty men arrived from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria. They had shaved off their beards, torn their clothes, and cut themselves to show they were mourning. They were carrying grain offerings and incense to present at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, went out from Mizpah to meet them. He was pretending to cry as he walked along. When he met them, he said to them, Come with me to meet Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. But as soon as they were inside the city, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and the men who were with him slaughtered them and threw their bodies in a cistern. But there were ten men among them who said to Ishmael, Do not kill us, for we will give you stores of wheat, barley, olive oil, and honey we have hidden in a field. So he spared their lives and did not kill them along with the rest. Now the cistern where Ishmael threw all the dead bodies of those he had killed was a large one that King Asa had constructed as part of his defenses against King Baasha of Israel. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, filled it with dead bodies. Then Ishmael took captive all the people who were still left in Mizpah. This included the royal princesses and all the rest of the people in Mizpah that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, had put under the authority of Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, took all these people captive and set out to cross over to the Ammonites. Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers who were with him heard about all the atrocities that Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, had committed. So they took all their troops and went to fight against Ishmael, son of Nathaniah. They caught up with him near the large pool at Gibeon. When all the people that Ishmael had taken captive saw Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers with them, they were glad. All these people that Ishmael had taken captive from Mizpah turned and went over to Johanan, son of Korea. But Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, managed to escape from Johanan, along with eight of his men, and he went over to Ammon. Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers who were with him, led off all the people who had been left alive at Mizpah. They had rescued them from Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, after he killed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. They led off the men, women, children, soldiers, and court officials whom they had brought away from Gibeon. They set out to go to Egypt to get away from the Babylonians, but stopped at Girith Kimham near Bethlehem. They were afraid of what the Babylonians might do, because Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, had killed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed to govern the country. God, you would think that after everyone had just seen all that you had had Jer Jeremiah prophesize come true, that they would believe him. Nebuzaradan did, uh, the captain of the royal guard, and he very graciously took care of Jeremiah because of it. Uh, but then we have Ishmael, who completely heard, saw, knew Jeremiah's prophet prophesizing, saw it come true, and then still went up against you. Uh, doing what he did was was akin to not just murder, but committing suicide in the way that he did it, who he chose to go after. Uh, and I think about about our world and how we handle things, or I guess I should say how I handle things. And there's so many times where you teach me lessons and they're very clear lessons. They couldn't be more clear than when Jeremiah prophesied that this would happen with the Babylonians and then it comes true. Um, so you show me very clear lessons in my life. Um, I apparently acknowledge factually that they happened and yet I go back and, and do some of the same stupid things over and over and over again. Sometimes even going so far as to justify why I'm doing them in the middle of it, making them make complete sense to me so that I can go and do them again or choose to go in and be in sin again. Um, 
how how horrid is it that our our will to be sinful is that strong that we are willing to go against fact and reason not to mention love and grace and forgiveness but just fact and reason of knowing full well what has happened to us in the past from a situation and yet going forward we still choose that same thing again and sometimes over and over and over again God, I just pray today that the lessons you teach me, that I learn quickly. I know everything happens in your time, but if it is your will for me to learn things quicker, then then allow that to happen. Because I know that when I'm choosing to dis- disobey you, to choose sin again and again in situations, especially where you've been really clear with me, um, not only am I obviously going against everything that you want me to do, but I'm also taking time away from the things I could be doing for you here on earth. That I'm completely getting sidetracked with worldly things, uh, with selfish things that are of my own choosing. And God, ultimately, even when I'm in the midst of that sinful time and sinful choosing and selfish points, even then I know that obviously I'm choosing the wrong thing and that I my heart truly seeks to do what you want me to do. God, help set my feet on a path that is yours. Um, Overcome my disobedient will, um, the will of a two-year-old brat. Overcome that with your grace-filled mercy, with your will that knows what is better for my life, and more importantly, knows what's better for your kingdom. God, I don't want to take away valuable time from you and what you have planned for me in this life. I know that if I don't do it, someone else will do it. Um, But the point is that you created me to do certain things in your kingdom. You gave me a new heart. And the very least I can do is to give you my life in return for that. The very least. God, thank you for the patience you have with us of teaching us these things over and over again. I just wish sometimes you didn't have to. In your son's name I pray. Amen.